I can't believe you. You don't like to add text animations? You don't like to make your videos look nice? Oh, wait, you do? Great, I knew you weren't one of them. So let's go ahead and get this thing started. All right, so my name is Jacques or Jacu, and I'm about to show you how to add some nice spice to your videos. Text is something that a lot of people add to their videos, but there's, it adds a bit, but you can just add that little bit more to make your videos just a bit better than everybody else's, and that is text animations. Text animations can take your clips from looking kind of boring like this. Yeah, he's gonna... And then uh, add a little spice to them, making them look a lot like this. All right, so today I'm going to show you some of my favorite text animations, some of which being the jump in text, the growing text, the bazir text, and the fade in text. I'm going to show you how to use these texts or these animations to get in with these texts, and I'm also going to show you how to get out with them. Because trust me, you can go in and make it look great, and on the way out, you make it look even better. All right, so the first animation we're going to start with is personally one of my favorites, and it is the jump in animation. So let's go ahead and hop into Premiere and I'll show you guys what we're getting into today. All right, so we're hopping into a clean new project for on Premiere. Uh, we do have some Overwatch footage in the background just so there's something there to look at. So to begin with this animation, we have to add some text in first. And the easiest way to do that is to use the, uh, the key behind T, which will go ahead and select the text tool. We're gonna click anywhere on the preview window, which will add some text onto our timeline. And uh, we can just type anything here like uh, GG, how about that, that works. Uh, GG is a bit small, so to make it a bit bigger, we're going to go over and hit the V key, which will give us, oh, still on select. Make sure to click back on your playhead or your uh, your timeline anywhere, really, and then click V, and that'll select, get your selection tool. Then you can click on GG, grab one of these corners and stretch it out a little bit. We just put it in the middle, doesn't really matter where. Uh, and now, make sure that you have the effects controls selected in the top left. Uh, we're gonna mess with the scale. We're not gonna really worry about position, rotation, or anchor point, nothing yet. We're gonna mess with anchor point later, but that's a little, it's a little tip. I have to wait a little bit to see that one. But, uh, so to start, we're gonna start with scale. So, to begin, all you have to do is click the little stopwatch to set the animation to begin. Now, uh, we're gonna move forward a little bit with our playhead and just grab it and scoot it over. We're gonna hit this little diamond in between these two arrows and that'll add another keyframe. Now, last step, or not last step, but next step, uh, put this playhead about three fourths of the way through between these two playheads and then add one more keyframe. So now all our keyframes are done. Next, we have to add in some values for these keyframes. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and start at this middle keyframe. We're gonna set the value at 110, I believe. Third keyframe doesn't need to be adjusted because that's what you want your text to look like at the very end. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and use these arrows, which will help you get through the keyframes a lot quicker. So by using these arrows, you can just hop right between the keyframes. Makes it a lot easier. Uh, and go to this beginning keyframe, and we're just gonna set it at zero. And let's see what it looks like. Now, that is very ugly, and uh, it's for a reason. It's super slow. These keyframes are really spread apart, but that is basically the animation. So all we have to do now is move these keyframes together and that's the animation. I'll get back to you guys with a good, a nice measurement once we uh, we have this set out and I'll show you how to read these measurements too. All right, so we're back. Now, uh, I did end up getting this thing to about 0.8 seconds. Uh, and yes, that sounds kind of weird and like how, how are we supposed to be able to copy this? Uh, but trust me, it's not too hard. Uh, you're gonna go to the beginning of your text on your playhead here. Just move it over and you're hit your I key, which adds an N. Then we're gonna go uh, anywhere really. Go ahead and hit O, which adds our out. Now what this does is these brackets will tell you exactly how much video is uh, is in the brackets. You can see that right over here on the right. So right now it's 0.15 seconds. Uh, go ahead and scoot this over to where we had our keyframe. And we can go ahead and drag this back over here too. And now we're at 0.8. Uh, that's probably the easiest, the easiest way to do it. And really you can drag it from anywhere. Just move it around, you'll be able to get whatever measurement you're needing. But 0.8 or 0.08 really looks good for this. So here we go. And that's the jump in text. Really quick, pretty, pretty easy. Uh, but there is one tip I'm gonna give you here. So uh, to get this text to look a little bit better when it's coming in with the animation, we're gonna change our anchor point. Now what it is, is you see this little circle here with a cross in it, all you have to do is to drag that right into the middle of your text and there we go oh, it's a little laggy here it's a little laggy there we go it's a lot better now uh 
so it's it's a very small adjustment it's kind of hard to see uh, but basically instead of having the text come in from the middle of the screen and kind of just jump in like from the middle you have it jump in on top of itself and to me it just it, it adds a little bit of a uh, touch to it and just makes it look a lot smoother so I showed you guys how to do this text, but I didn't really tell you when to do it. And honestly, this is one of my favorite animations to use. I honestly use it a little too much sometimes, uh, but it's really at your discretion of when you want to use it, because this one's so versatile and how you can use it. Uh, typically at the beginning of the clip, first thing that usually pops up, unless it's specific to one of these other animations I'm about to show you, I put a jump in text on it. It just, it looks the best out of most of the animations and it's one of my favorite ones to use. All right, so now we've covered how to do it, we've covered when to do it, and I'm gonna show you how to get rid of it. Uh, I said that earlier, we're gonna show you how to use the same animations just to close out the text. So we bring it in with the animation, and we can close out with the same animation. So to begin, uh, our text is a little longer, so we're gonna cut it down. We're gonna hit C, which brings up the, uh, the, the razor tool. I like to call it the clipping tool, but it doesn't really matter. It's whatever you wanna call it. Click anywhere in your playhead, and you're gonna adjust this for however you need in your own videos. Uh, right click and click clear gets rid of it uh, now we're going to clip back on the text and uh, it's a lot shorter now it's a lot easier to work with but it's pretty simple how you just do this close out animation you're going to left click drag over your keyframes right click copy then we're going to come over a little bit with our playhead and then hit Control v which pastes it uh, then this is basically the same animation but to get rid of it all we have to do is move the keyframes around so Drag our uh, our zero keyframe, which is basically where no text is on screen, move it all the way to the end. And now our third keyframe is right here, kind of in the middle now. So we need to move that back over to the left. And uh, this is a bit wide compared to the left one. Cause if you look at the last one, the left one, you can see what you're trying to mirror and recreate. So we're just gonna grab this, uh, move it over here a bit there. And there you go. So that's it for the end of this animation. To me, it's really subtle, but it helps add that extra little touch to your video just to polish it up just a little bit more. But wait, there is one more trick I'm gonna show you that works for all of these other animations we're gonna do. And it's pretty simple and it helps out a lot. All you have to do is left click, drag over these keyframes, and then uh, we're gonna go over to vector here right click it and click save preset and what this allows you to do is save a preset uh, so whenever you're making a video and you don't want to sit here and add these keyframes in for every single text you save a preset it cuts down an enormous amount of time from editing and makes your life 100 percent easier but i have one more thing to show you with these presets uh for all presets that i'm going to show you you should probably set it to anchor to end point. Now there's a reason for this. If you click scale, uh, it'll actually change where these keyframes are at based on the size of your text and that can really mess stuff up. So to make things really just uh, the same across the board, I always do anchor to in or anchor to out depending on um, where it, whenever there's an end text. So like this is a beginning animation, I'm gonna set it to anchor to end point. But if I save these last few keyframes, I'm gonna set it to anchor to out point. So then it always ends up to the end or the beginning of whatever text you're wanting to use it for. Now, really, you can name this whatever you want. We're just going to leave it as Vector Motion Preset. Uh, but then you just come over here to Presets in the top right corner of your screen, and then it'll be right here. I do have a lot of presets in here, but it doesn't really matter. You can take this and then move it wherever you want. You can set up custom folders for presets, uh, but it's there. I'm going to go ahead and delete this, though, because I've already got one. Don't really need it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and hop into our next animation. All right, so our second animation is going to be the growing in text, or I call it the linear in. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but this one is super simple. So to begin this animation, we're going to add one keyframe at the beginning. We're going to move our playhead in a little bit more, and we're going to add one more keyframe. Uh, we're going to use these arrows, go back to our first keyframe, and add in a zero value. And that's it. That's all it is for the linear in text or the growing text, whatever you want to call it. It's really basic. Uh, it's super simple, but it fits a very specific niche. So if I have somebody coming into a clip and saying, uh linear in every time if it's something that's long and drawn out linear in period that's it it takes the forefront of every one of those long drawn out texts okay so once again we've covered how to do it we covered when to do it and uh, now we're going to get rid of it it's the same as the first one all you have to do is copy these two keyframes i'm over here Control v swap them around however you want to do them and that's it Linear is out, it shrinks out, whatever you want to call it. Go ahead and save that preset to save yourself some time. And then we're going to go ahead and move on to the next text animation. 
All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and move into our next text animation, the Bazir N animation. Uh, it's actually extremely similar to the linear N. You can even use the exact same uh, keyframes here. Uh, all you have to do is click this little uh, drop down arrow next to scale. All you do is click on this right keyframe. Uh, you're gonna grab this little circle here. Try to keep your mouse lined up with this, uh, this line here on the right and drag it as far left as possible. Then we're gonna grab this other left circle here Try to keep it in line with that line again and just match the circles, drag as far right as you can. And uh, that's the Bazir N right there. It's a little, it's very quick here. So let's go ahead and drag it out a little bit just so it looks a bit better. Yeah, there you go. See, it, and it's another one of those specific things. It kind of works well with linear or uh, they fit the same niche in a way. So think if I was to go, uh, I don't know, See, it's when you, you start off kind of slow and you're moving into a text or when somebody's talking, they're moving into what they're saying and then they, they speed up with what they're saying really quickly. It's another niche thing, but it works. And sometimes you can fit it in places where it's not really supposed to go, but it's up to you. Uh, and then to do the, the out version of this text, all we have to do, let's go ahead and drag this keyframe over a little bit. And you're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna grab this little circle here. We're gonna move as far right as possible and try to keep it lined up. It's a little difficult sometimes, with, especially with these things, because it's very sensitive. And then we're gonna grab the second keyframe. We're gonna scoot it over here just so we can see it. Uh, and then we're gonna drag it as far left as we can, try to line up those circles. And there you go. Zero out. That's all for that animation. Now we're gonna get to our next one, which is the fade animation. So as all these other ones have been, the fade is also extremely easy. Uh, all you have to do is go down here to opacity, expand that so you can see all the values that are going on. We're gonna add one keyframe here, scoot it forward a bit, add another keyframe, gonna move back to our original keyframe and uh, just set it at zero. Zero works for most of these values, so, and it fades in. Now it's a bit quick, so let's go ahead and just drag this out a little bit so you can see. It just fades in. So fade in is another one of the specific ones where I like to use in certain situations, but it's really however you feel. It's your video. I believe in you. You can be creative and figure out how you want to use this animation. You may even want to use it some way that I don't use it at all. And maybe I think is completely terrible, but you think is amazing, but it doesn't matter because it's not my video. It's yours. Super easy, right? I don't even think I really need to go over to close this one. You guys know, copy your keyframes over, swap them around it. Hey, not like this, not like this. Movie back, okay. Swap the keyframes around, save your presets to save yourself some time, and there you go. That's it, that's how you edit stuff. All right, so that's the end of this tutorial. If I didn't cover something that you wanna see, let me know down in the comments below. I'll try to make another part two to this video, hopefully soon. Uh, if you haven't already, go check out my second channel where I put a lot of these text animations to use. And uh, until next time, peace. Yeah, we're playing like 3.4K right now. All you gotta do is just do damage. <laughs> <laughs> Holy, oh my that god. Guy.